What's going on guys welcome to Gizmo Deck so today i'm going to do a full review of the Nokia Lumia 520 so the Lumia 520 is one of the most affordable and cheap windows 8 smartphone available right now it sells for about 9500 rupees in indian market and about 190 dollars in the us this is actually the first windows phone 8 device which i have tested personally and used as my daily driver and i would like to thank Nokia for making this review possible so without any further ado let's get started with the review now Let's start off by talking about the design of the phone. So when you take a first look on the Nokia Lumia 520, the first thing that flashes in the eye is its color. The Lumia 520 is available in a variety of colors like blue, black, white, red and yellow. It's nice to see such vibrant colors rather than traditional white and black panels on most of the smartphones today. So the front of the phone has some sensors on the top with the earpiece. Below the earpiece, we have the 4 inch 800 by 480 pixel screen with a PPI of 233. On the bottom are the three capacitive buttons for back, home and Bing search respectively. On the top is the 3.5mm headphone jack. The back of the phone has a 5 megapixel camera but the LED flash is missing. There is also a speaker on the bottom right which is fairly loud and nice. On the sides we have the volume rocker, the power button as well as a dedicated camera key. The back of the phone is removable which reveals a 1430mAh battery, a micro sim slot as well as a memory card slot. Overall, the phone is designed really well and at 124 grams, the Lumia 520 is a really light phone and it fits perfectly in the hand. Although the back is made up of plastic, the phone does not feel that cheap and offers the best build quality for its price. The Lumia 520 runs on the latest iteration of Windows Phone operating system which is Windows Phone 8. As a first time user, I was impressed by Windows Phone 8 and its Metro interface. As soon as you unlock your device, you get the flat live tile screen. The sizes of these tiles can be changed according to what you like. As you can see on the screen right now, we can customize the live tiles with a variety of colors and shades. You can also change the background of the home screen from white to black. So overall, we have a very much customizable live tiles interface on the home screen of Windows Phone 8. These live tiles also show you your notifications. The tiles pull out your data and keep on updating, like the photo tile here shows random photos from my album. Swiping across the top reveals the status bar where you can get your standard notifications like Bluetooth, message, WhatsApp, etc. As you swipe towards the left, you get the app drawer which has each and every app installed on this phone. You can pin any of the app on your home screen from the application menu. And speaking of apps, here's where the things get a little dicey. The Windows Phone 8 App Store isn't much developed yet because many of the famous apps on iOS and Android are not yet available here officially. For example, if I search up Instagram, I get various third-party apps which work well but there is no official app for Instagram. Same is the case with SoundCloud. So I have to use alternative apps such as Metrogram for Instagram and AudioCloud for SoundCloud. These third-party apps work really great but you miss on the latest features from the official apps like Metrogram here does not support in Instagram video yet. Same is the case with games too. Most of them are not available on Windows Phone 8 yet, but many of the notable titles are available here like Asphalt 7, NFS Hot Pursuit, Assassin's Creed, Temple Run and the whole Angry Birds series. Windows Phone 8 also has inbuilt voice controls. You can press the Windows key and say your command to open various apps or call or text any of the contact. The voice controls on Windows 8 is very nice because you can download uh, the language you want to and uh, use it accordingly. Multitasking is also pretty sweet on this phone. You just need to hold the back button and select the app you want to get into. To exit, press the back button again and you are back on the home screen. Overall, Windows Phone 8 is a very light, smooth and fast operating system. It integrates very well with services like Google Mail. I never had any kind of random reboots or application force closed with Windows Phone 8. Everything here is very much simplistic, slick and easy to use. I personally loved using the operating system. It was a beautiful experience using Windows Phone 8. I would say that if you get all the apps you need in a smartphone with Windows Phone 8, then you can opt for it. The major benefit of Windows Phone 8 is its optimization. It runs smoothly and swiftly even on low-end hardware. And in future, if all the major apps and games start coming to Windows Phone, it can give a serious competition to iOS and Android. So this was all about the software and Windows Phone 8. Now let us talk about the hardware and performance of Lumia 520. 
The Lumia 520 runs on a 1 GHz dual core processor with 5 and 2 MB of RAM. Even with such low specs, it runs Windows Phone 8 without any hitch. Navigating through the menus is very fast, fluid and snappy. The hardware is capable of running Windows Phone 8 very well. The browser could load up heavy websites such as The Verge and Pinching, in and pinching Out was very smooth. Although there was a 1 second delay sometimes while pinching out but it isn't much noticeable. The 512 MB RAM can cause a bottleneck in game compatibility because many of the Windows Phone 8 games require a minimum of 1 GB of RAM. But still, there were many games to play on the 520. I played Asphalt 7 and the gameplay was indeed very good with no noticeable lag. Since the display is a 480 pixel display, the graphics aren't that amazing but the game runs really well. Many other games like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, Assassin's Creed, Jetpack Joyride ran very well too. I saw some lag in Temple Run sometimes but it doesn't occur that frequently. Do let me know if you want an extensive gameplay video on the Lumia 520. As I said before, the display of this phone is a 4 inch 800 by 480 pixel display with a PPI of 233. The display is crisp and colors look vibrant. The viewing angles are also good. Although the screen is small, the keyboard is well laid out and it is easy to type on the Lumia 520. I found the display to be reflective but using it in sunlight was not a big issue. So thumbs up to Nokia in the display department. The camera on the Lumia 520 is a 5 megapixel shooter and it is capable of 720p video. The camera lacks an LED flash which hampers its performance in low light. The camera app on Windows Phone 8 is very basic. You can tap to focus and click the picture or use the camera key. The app has some photo settings like ISO, focus, exposure, etc. There are many nice apps added by Nokia in the form of lenses. You can download various lenses from the App Store. For example, Bing Lens is a barcode scanner and the Cinemagraph lens produces GIF-like images. There are also other apps like Photo Beamer and Smartshoot. Smartshoot is a very nifty feature. It it takes more than one shot at a time and then you can select the best shot. Here are some of the sample images from the camera of the Lumia 520 under various uh, light conditions. Another major aspect in buying a smartphone is its battery life and Lumia 520 does not disappoint here. I had the phone charged up since 7.30 in the morning. With some moderate usage like checking mail, whatsapp and streaming a few songs, I had 45% of battery by noon. I also had the brightness turned on to medium and 3G data was on continuously. So with medium usage, you might just make it through a day. If you are a heavy user who watches a lot of HD movies or plays a lot of games and uses data on 3G, you might need two charges a day. So after all this testing and reviewing and uh, telling you about the pros and cons of the device, you might ask me what is the verdict of the review. So I would say that for the price, the Nokia Lumia 520 is a perfect blend of hardware and software. For about 9500 rupees, it is a serious competition to other Android phones. The phone has a nice design, it's fast and snappy, plays games well and also has a decent battery life. The cons were more on the software side rather than the hardware side. So Nokia did a great job in making the device. So I would say that if you get all the apps uh, you use on Windows Phone 8, then you should give uh, Windows Phone 8 or the Nokia Lumia 520 a try. So this was my review about the Nokia Lumia 520. Thank you for watching the review. Do leave your comments and questions about the video in the comment section below the like button. Also hit the subscribe button below this video for more awesome content. So anyways guys, thank you for watching. Peace.